What is going on everybody? David here from Bloopers Videos and Collectibles and today I got a brand new video for y'all and this time we will be reviewing the 1993 Kenner Jurassic Park Series 1 Human Assortment line. Now there are five figures in this line in Series 1 and um, just to clarify a few things um, these figures that when they were produced uh, before the movie came out um, sometimes when a film gets a major toy line they tend to do things that are actually in uh, pre-production and <clears throat> that being said a lot of times when toy lines come out they don't always represent what the film is all about most of the time sometimes yes but majority of the time no uh, that's why a lot of people um, can say that not a lot of these things as far as when it comes to the human assortment lines uh, back then are not always movie accurate um, <clears throat> with that being said some of these things if you read the novel uh, some of these uh, figures they took after um, from the book and that's just my assumption but just judging by what's in front of me and some of the accessories and some of the figures, you know, they're pretty much, um, you could tell if you read the novel and watched the film, you could tell the, the difference between what's uh, somewhat movie accurate and somewhat uh, book accurate. Um, <clears throat> that being said, a, a lot of times uh, these figures don't always match up to the actors or the actresses that portray these characters. So that's what we're going to be going over a little bit, you know, so we can kind of uh, get a little a trivia going on here and stuff, you know, some inside looks. So stuff that I've learned over the years, you know, from reading the books and talking to fellow JP collectors and fans, you know, and about the toy lines and, you know, things like that. Things that I picked up and bits of information that I've read and heard and discussed, you know, things like that. So... Uh, but yes, this uh, wave or series is complete and very happy because if it wasn't for a few people in the JP community, I wouldn't be having all these complete. Um, most of them were hand-me-downs. Others I was able to make trades for certain accessories. Um, on a lot of other stuff I was able to uh, purchase, you know, and um, very grateful to... I've met everybody in the uh, that I associate with in the JP community and was able to help me complete uh, this uh, uh, series. <clears throat> so, but that being said, uh, the first figure I want to look at is, you know, is none other than Alan Grant. Um, so, Alan Grant right here, he comes with a um, hatchling. Well, let's put him back here. Um, comes with a hatchling. This is a pteranodon hatchling, and um, very nice mold. Um, the only thing <laughs> that sucks about it is that it doesn't stand very well. You just kind of have to lean it on something or someone, and if you just lay it flat, it just looks like it's you know it's dead. But then again, with Alan Grant's um, uh, action feature, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense to have it like that, but. It'd be kind of cool just to kind of be able to have it standing, you know. But all it is is just a, uh, uh, got a blue head and got a um, grayish white underbelly all right here. And then here, you know, it's kind of got the dark uh, grayish color there, the JP logo right there. So, not the best hatchling, but still cool for what it is. <clears throat> put him over here and then here we got Alan Grant and um, really like this figure uh, but a lot of people don't know who don't follow Jurassic Park like that you know um, originally before um, Sam Neill got the part uh, Harrison Ford was considered and a lot of the concept work when it first uh, started the uh, uh, pre-production for it as far as the concept art goes um, 
they had Harrison Ford's uh, uh, likeness to it. And if you look real closely, um, you can kind of tell that this was kind of took after Harrison Ford a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Um, that's just my opinion. Because <clears throat> like I mentioned before in the beginning, um, a lot of times... Uh, studios tell these toy makers, hey, this is what I want, this is what, it, what we want to look like, and this is who we want to make it after. So, let me know in the comments below if you think that uh, this looks like uh, Harrison Ford a little bit in the face. Just a little bit. Uh, but anyways, so this is his accessory. comes with the uh, launching uh, backpack, and there's the net. And uh, this is the little smart bomb that he comes with. So, uh, why he has this, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, this is where we store the net at. And um, in order to achieve this, we would have to uh, unravel this net and be able to kind of space it out a little bit. And then, I guess depending on how you have it set, you want to set in these two pegs right there. And you have it like that. And then you want to press this little button right here. This little button right there. And then it would just launch. And then you would capture your pteranodon. So that's how that action feature works. So I really like the hat. Got the little patch right there. Got the blue uh, shirt. Like a like just a basic blue t-shirt. And the pants, you know, really nice texture. Got the little knee pads down here. And then you got the boots. So and this is where the uh, backpack goes on. Um, when you have one of these figures, if it's complete, if you want to display them with all this gear on, just be careful when you take these on and off because over time these things can uh, get uh, fragile and they tend to tear and break. So, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this little thing up and we'll just store it back up and we'll get to the next uh, figure. <clears throat> it just wraps up like that. Easy storage right there. Probably not as good as I had it the first time around. But, um, then you can just put this back in his hand like that so he can hold on to it. Now, sometimes you kind of have to, uh, when you put the, put him down in the stance, you kind of have to lean him forward so that way he can... Oops, I'm just knocking everybody over. Timber. <laughs> Domino effect. Oh, well. Yeah, that's what happens. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and set everybody up. I can tell this is going to be a long video just because of all the setup I do. Normally, I would just pause it and do all this. But why bother? We're doing this live. You want to see all the errors of my ways. The error of my ways. Whatever you want to say it. There we go. So the next person we got is uh, Tim Murphy. <clears throat> now, uh, let me first start off showing with Tim. Now, as you can tell, in this sculpt, he's a little older. Um, in the movie... He was probably about eight, nine years old, but in the, in a book, he was a uh, much older. He's like a teenager, I think, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's been a while since I uh, read the book, and I think the last time I uh, was reading the book, or should I say, listening, was one of the audio books, you know, a couple years ago, and. Uh, he is an older uh, kid, probably like around 12, 13, you know, barely a teenager. So that's probably where this uh, look came from because, you know, he sure didn't have that 
haircut at all or anything. So, anyways. <clears throat> so, as you can tell, the head sculpt right there looks like a little teenager. Got that uh, 90s hairstyle right there. And then he's got this uh, bandolier right there all the way across his uh, chest. Got the little JP badge right there, the white uh, t-shirt, shorts, khaki pants, or excuse me, not khaki pants, but khaki shorts. And then the white tennis shoes and white socks. So, very nice, very nice. Uh, I say bandolier because that's what it looks like, but it, it just looks like it's just a bunch of uh, um, just pockets, you know. So, store a lot of little things. So, it's a little mark right there. So, so the accessories that he comes with. Oops, I'm knocking down Al. Uh, I'm knocking everything over. Yeah, well, I'll just leave him like that. So, um, the hatchling that he comes with <clears throat> is a baby brachiosaurus. And um, right now I have him in his cage. So... There's the baby Brachiosaurus. Uh, very good sculpt. Really like this little sculpt. Stubby tail. It's a JP mark right there. So, I think this thing was very well done. You know. And, accessories. It comes with this cage. You open it up. It's a little baby there. And, voila. Got yourself a little hatchling. And he's got these little night vision goggles. Now these, you know, can get lost easily. So if you have a complete Tim Murphy, make sure you store these accessories if you're not displaying them very well. Because once you lose these, these are really hard to find. And I have yet to see them on eBay being sold as is this. So, and if they are, or there is any, or there was any, Probably sold for a hefty price, I'm pretty sure. Probably about 20 bucks or more. So then we have this noose that it comes with. It's all the little red peas right there. And um, <clears throat> what you do is get this little string right there. And I'm not going to pull it all the way because of that little knot right there. So, But you get the point, what a noose is. <clears throat> so... Now, moving on to uh, Robert Muldoon, who was uh, portrayed by the late uh, Bob Peck. And uh, now, I think in the novel, he was a younger gentleman, I think. So that's probably where he got this look. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure somebody's going to correct me in the uh, comments. But, anyways, um. Really like this figure. Uh, it looks nothing like uh, uh, Bob Peck at all. You know, as you can tell, younger and um, doesn't have his uh, trademark hat or anything. So he's got the yellow vest over the uh, khaki shirt, got the little JP mark right there. Uh, the face sculpt uh, looks really good. Um, really like that. And then you got the shorts right here, the khaki shorts. And he's got the uh, holster right there for a gun. And you got the knife that's molded. All this is molded in, you know. And uh, he's got the, the boots and the socks. So. And then the accessories comes with this little uh, backpack that holds the uh, missiles. And um, <clears throat> we'll uh, move that out the way. And then here is the uh, rocket launcher. Now, if you remember in the novel, um, he did have a rocket launcher that he used, you know, so. <clears throat> but not in the movie. Would have been cool, though, but um, didn't have one. So, then you would just press this knob right there, because this is just a single solid black piece. Very minor, very minor 
uh, details. Um, snap in the rocket falls, or falls, fires, not falls. So, I've got two sets of rockets, like I said, or not two sets, but two separate rockets, or missiles. So, this one uh, was uh, missing the side, so I'm pretty sure I'll, no, I probably won't replace it. If I do, if I've got to find it cheap, because these, uh, these missiles go for quite a bit, like a good eight, ten dollars, if not more. So, <clears throat> I do need another set for my Series 2 uh, Muldoon, so... So in order to have it uh, in his um, hand to replace it, because a lot of times a lot of people don't know how to set them up because, you know, it looks kind of difficult to hold, but you just uh, place it right there. And set them back here. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. So, <clears throat> next up is a little hatchling, is a baby T-Rex. Now, it would have been cool if they would add the uh, raptor hatchling uh, in the first series instead of in series two when they did the repaint, you know, for uh, Robert Muldoon. But the baby T-Rex, you know, is cool. You know, I like it. One of the better hatchlings from uh, series two, or uh, not series two, but series one. And uh, it's probably my favorite one out of the whole uh, series. Uh, for series one humans, that is. So, very nice sculpt. It's a very solid piece, too. And little JP Marmot there, kind of brownish, uh, with a brownish color, with a dark brown uh, pattern there. But very nice. So, just you. That. And uh, next up is we have uh, Dennis Nedry. Now we know that Dennis Nedry was not a uh, skinny guy. He was more of an over, overweight person. He was obese. And, um, <clears throat> so uh, this is a... Uh, I like this one. I think I, like, I prefer this one over Series 2. Um, just, I don't know, it's got that cool factor to it. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that's different between the Series 1 and Series 2 is the head sculpt, but everything else is the same. And plus different hatchling. So, pretty good head sculpt right there. The glass is uh, molded in on the face. That um, comes with a uh, backpack where you just uh, put water in there and squirts water. <clears throat> you just have to take this out and kind of dip the tip in the water and then it squirts. Um, overall, the sculpt is really good. Got the wrinkles in his sweater. I call it a sweater because that's what it looks like. Got the JP badge right there, and he's got the gun that's molded in on in in his chest. And um, pants look really good. Black pants, shoes. And he's got gloves. So, overall, you know, this is an accessory that comes with the main accessory. And then. <clears throat> Then it comes with this little gas mask. So, put this on right there. Looks like he's about to do some, uh, get into some mischief. And this little hatchling is the baby Dilophosaurus right here. So, if you really look at it, it doesn't look like a Dilophosaurus. I mean, you could tell just by the, uh, uh, I guess it's supposed to be a, if they had connected that and kind of, oh, well, yeah, I can see it now. I guess I never really looked at the hatchling like that. This is my first time really taking a really good look at it. Because I always I was always bothered by this and I was thinking of something else. But then I really noticed that they got the frills on the side right there. That's really cool. I never really noticed that. I was like, why did they put the frills on top? But now, now we're actually really looking at it. Yep. And the texturing is really good on this one, too. You know what? I think this might be my favorite one. No, I'm just kidding. No, T-Rex is my favorite one. This is a good one. Probably my second one. Second favorite. Um, got the JP logo right there. Got that forest uh, green color up there. The white underbelly. So, 
nicely done right there. So they're really cool right there. And last but not least, we have a uh, uh, Ellie Sadler, who was played by Lauren, Laura Dern. Um, uh, for those who don't know, his uh, Nedry was portrayed by Wayne Knight. Uh, he's uh, known for Newman on the Seinfeld. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is Ellie Sadler. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, this would have been a perfect uh, figure to for uh, 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 Lex. You know, the little girl in the in Jurassic Park, and just. Just based by the head sculpt and how young it looks, you know, would have been a perfect Lex, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but, other than that, another good figure. I'm going to go ahead and take this accessory off. Uh, the outfit pretty much matches to what she wore in the film. And, and uh, with the uh, pink shirt and with the khaki pants and everything. Got the JP badge down there. Uh, great head sculpt right there. Like I said, it would have been better if it was a uh, uh, Alex instead of uh, an Ellie. Um, the shoes match pretty good. Brown shoes. Um, nice figure. Comes with a backpack. Uh, <clears throat> as part of her accessories. Uh, down here, you get the molded in gun. And you get the flashlight right there, so that's a nice touch right there. So, really cool right there. And then, as far as her weapons goes, it's a it's a hook launcher. Now, she didn't have a hook launcher right there, so. Uh, I don't know what you would use it for, but. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's a, it is an, uh, an accessory, so. I guess he's trying to hook the dinosaurs or something. Uh, who knows? I guess it's just one of those things that you got to use your imagination. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and try to put this back on her. So, this is another one of those uh, items where, you know, you have to try to figure out how to get her to hold it. So, it's like that. I think she was holding it a little bit more up like that, so that way, so grab onto that, and some of that thread was coming off. Yeah, well. But yeah, surprisingly she stands very well while holding this. And then, last but not least, our hatchling little uh, uh, Triceratops hatchling, you know, one solid piece. It's probably like my least favorite one, you know. No, I think the Pteranodon is uh, my least favorite one. This is my second least favorite one. <laughs> so. But it's got the JP mark right there. It's got that cream, cream uh, underbelly, and then the green top and everything, so. It's a fairly good sculpt, you know, I really like it. Very not, nice sculpt, not not bad. So yeah, there you have it. There is my series one human assortment line from the nineteen ninety three Kenner Jurassic Park toy line. Um oops, I'm always knocking these guys over. Yeah. That's one thing about going live is you see all my fuck ups. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too painful for y'all. Um, but nonetheless, um, that wraps up the video. You know, I hope y'all enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed filming it. <clears throat> if you haven't subscribed already, please uh, give this channel a sub. Um, like the video, comment down below what you think of this uh, toy line or this human uh, series one line. And um, let me know if you read the book and, and seen the movie. And also let me know what you think of the figures, if they look like anybody that I mentioned uh, while going over these figures or, you know, or if 
they they didn't, you know. Um, and then let me know if you grew up having these toys in, in your collection. You played with them as a kid. Let me know. You know, talk to me. I want to know. Want to know it all. So, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can see all my uploads. Um, like I said, I'm still going to go through all my vintage stuff, you know. And um, if you want to know some of my uh, purchases that I've made over the past couple of years or so, please check out my eBay, uh, um, uh, what they call it, I can't even think of it. I uh, uh, can't even think of my, my eBay purchase um, playlist. Yes, that's what I'm looking for, a playlist. Check out my eBay purchase uh, playlist. Uh, you find all kinds of things that I uh, bought over the first, that left. <laughs> can't even talk anymore. Last couple of years, and uh, got some interesting stuff. I'm probably going to go over them again, you know, kind of fresh, you know, kind of uh, freshen up everything a little bit, because some of those videos are kind of old and outdated, not so great, uh, but hey, it is what it is. <clears throat> but anyways, so where's the wisdom? Buy what you love and not what you like, because if you buy what you like, you will always end up getting rid of it. And I will catch y'all later.